Hello again, uh, this is Professor Marsh and this is the lecture for Unit 14. Um, this is the final week uh, of the course and so in addition to uh, this lecture uh, which will cover uh, the statement of cash flows uh, which was the reading for Unit 13, uh, I'll also give you a preview uh, of your final exam. Uh, so the final exam will be worth a total of 280 points uh, it will have 40 multiple choice questions, uh, each of which are worth four points. And then there'll be four simulations uh, that will be 120 points in total. There'll be 30 points each. Now in studying for the exam, if I, as I've mentioned before, I want you to focus uh, on one, the, the material for the, uh, uh, you know, the, for the 16 chapters that we covered uh, in the book, uh, but with an emphasis on the following topics. The first emphasis would be the global comprehensive example that I've now posted three times in your materials. It's also in Unit 13. The lecture that I did that explains how to do this work, and this is basically, this is the Pentateuch of the uh, accounting world. This is the first five chapters uh, of your book, and it explains how to do all the journal entries, T accounts, financial statements, all the adjustments and all the closing entries for your basic three financial statements, the income statement, the uh, balance sheet, and also the statement of uh, owner's equity. So those, those three uh, financial statements and all the entries needed to produce those financial statements are uh, included in that example. That's the global comprehensive example uh, it was posted in Unit 8A, and it's also posted again in Unit 14. Uh, so study that carefully for the final. Then the second thing that you need to know, the second most important uh, task and talent that you can get out of this class is to be able to do a bank reconciliation. So if you're going to a prospective employer, they ask, do you know accounting? If you know the global comprehensive example, you can say yes. If they say, can you do a bank reconciliation? Well, learn this material too. This is section 8.6 in your book. Very important for you to review this. There is a review lecture, which is posted in unit 14 on this particular section in your book. So make sure you learn this and learn it well for the final. The third key task and talent that you have for the final is the amortization schedule. I have posted a lecture. The lecture might be hard to, to view uh, because I'm asking you to look from one computer screen onto another computer screen. So what you might wanna do is you might wanna just play the audio for that lecture and then look at the Excel worksheet that I've loaded as homework, uh, and I've put that uh, also in Unit 14. So look at the Excel amortization schedule and uh, have it in front of you as you listen to the lecture uh, and make sure that you understand that material. That's going to show up in one of the simulations on the final exam. And then the fourth topic is the topic that we're going to talk about in this lecture. That's the statement of cash flows. That's chapter 16, the final chapter in your materials. Uh, so let's, uh, let's take a look at that. And uh, I'm going to, uh, if I can, get back into your book. We're going to be looking at section uh, 16.3 and 16.4 uh, in your principles of accounting uh, textbook. And so uh, this particular uh, chapter in the book, the final chapter in the book, is all about uh, how to uh, understand and prepare the statement of cash flows. And as your book uh, explains, uh, there are five steps. There's five steps to prepare the statement of cash flows. You have to make uh, basically, you know, a couple of determinations and a couple of reconciliations. But what you're going to do is you're going to look at the financial statements for the business and the, you'll need three financial statements. You'll need the balance sheet from the beginning of the period. 
you'll need the balance sheet at the end of the period, and you'll need the income statement for the period. So does that, does that make sense? What we're gonna do is we're gonna basically do some forensic accounting and determine what cash flow was from those accrual basis financial statements, okay? Beginning and ending balance sheets and the income statement for the period. And what we're going to determine is we're going to determine what was the net cash flow of the business from operating activities, what was the net cash flow from investing activities, and what was the net cash flow from financing activities. So how, how do we determine that? Well, it's a little bit like being a financial detective. So you start with operating activities and to use the indirect method of preparing the statement of cash flows, and that's the method that we're going to use for this course, then what we begin with is the net income that's on the income statement. Then we add back non-cash expenses, things like depreciation, amortization, depletion. Then we remove the effects of gains and losses from the disposal of long-term assets. So if you look at the income statement, there might be gains that are in the income statement, but they didn't come from operating activity. They came from the disposal and what you realized from uh, the disposition of long-term assets, uh, things like uh, selling a factory or uh, disposing of vehicles. And so those are assets that are typically can, you know, treated as property, plant, and equipment on the uh, you know, uh, long-term assets, the fixed asset portion uh, of the balance sheet. And so those gains have to come out of net income. Uh, they have to be removed because they're not related to operating activities. They're related to something else, uh, maybe investing, maybe financing. Uh, and then we have to uh, adjust for changes in current assets and liabilities to remove accruals from operating activities. Uh, so what we'll find sometimes is that a business uh, might be growing very rapidly, uh, but it might not be accumulating cash because a lot of the growth in revenue is coming from accounts receivable. So, you know, as business increases, uh, we have to provide more credit to customers. And so accounts receivable might be increasing. And we also might be gearing up with the expectation that we're going to have even more business in the future. So we might be growing uh, inventory. Uh, and so the increase in those kind of current assets like inventory and accounts receivable can actually be a negative on cash, it can reduce cash flow from operations. Or the alternate alternative could be that you have a business that maybe is slowing down and they're liquidating accounts receivable and inventory, and that's creating a lot of cash from operating activities, uh, even though the business is slowing down uh, and customers are you know catching up on their payments and we're not rebuilding inventory. And so that could be a business that's really in liquidation, even though it has a lot of cash flow. And of course, the word liquidation refers to the process of selling assets for cash. Okay, so then we determine net cash flow from investing activities. And so net cash flow from investing activities is going to include cash received and cash paid relating to long term assets. So investing activities could be the sale of a business, the purchase of a business, uh, the purchase of uh, machinery and equipment, purchase of vehicles, things of that nature, or the sale uh, of those particular assets. And that could be cash flow from investing activities. And then net cash flow from financing activities could be cash received and cash paid related to long-term liabilities and equity. So long-term liabilities could be that we're paying off a loan, we're paying off a mortgage, and so we're using cash for that. Uh, or we could potentially be paying dividends, and that would be uh, ca you know, a cash outflow uh, from investing activities to pay a dividend to shareholders. Now, cash received from borrowing, if we take a mortgage, take a long-term loan, uh, or if we sell stock in the business, sell equity interest in the business, that would be cash received from investing activities, I'm sorry, from financing activities. So that uh, 
uh, yeah, that could be cash flow from financing activities to get cash uh, from issuing a note uh, or issuing stock. Okay, then we, the next step after those three steps, operating, investing, and financing, uh, then uh, we have to reconcile uh, the total net cash flows to the change in the cash balance during the period. Uh, and so we combine the net cash flows in the first three steps to determine total net cash flow. Then the beginning cash balance is presented from the prior balance sheet and the total net cash flows for the period are ended, added to the beginning cash balance and that should equal the ending cash balance. So the cash flow during the period could be a positive or a negative. If it's a positive, then cash went up during the period. If it's a negative, uh, then cash went down. Uh, and then we present the non-cash investing and financing transactions. So transactions that do not affect cash but do affect long-term assets, long-term debt, and or equity are disclosed either in a notation at the bottom of the statement of cash flow or in the notes to the financial statements. And so if we take a look at the example that's in section 16.3, uh, this is an example of the financial statements in, in, uh, uh, for the propensity company as of December 31st of 2017 and 2018. And you can see that their uh, beginning cash uh, at the beginning of the uh, 2018 year uh, is the same as their ending cash uh, at December 31st of 2017. So beginning cash was 24,300. And then you can see in this first column that the ending cash at the end of 2018 was 47,500. And so <clears throat> that's an increase uh, during the period of 23,200. And that's the number that we're going to try to prove to uh, in our statement of cash flows. <clears throat> then uh, you can also see the income statement for the propensity company. And you can see that there was net income of $4,340. And so uh, we're gonna have to figure out how a company that only earned a profit of 4,340 for the period had an increase in cash flow of 23,200. But uh, we have the tools to do that. Now we're given some additional information. Uh, we're told that propensity company sold land with an original cost of 10,000 for 14,800. And sure enough, if we look up on the income statement, we can see gain on sale of land for $4,800. Uh, then we can also see that a new parcel of land was purchased for $20,000 in exchange for a note payable. Uh, so what effect does that have on cash? Well, it really doesn't have any, right? That says, looks like seller financing, uh, but you're told that that's what happened, and so you have to know about that in, in order to account for it correctly. Then you've got plant assets that were purchased for $40,000 in cash, and then you've got propensity declared and paid a $440 cash dividend to shareholders, and then propensity issued common stock uh, in exchange for $45,000 in cash. And you can see an example of the statement of cash flows. And this is just a logical presentation, a rearranging of the information in those three financial statements, uh, and then also the additional information. So first thing we're going to determine is cash flow from operating activities. You can start with the net income of $4,340, and that comes right off the income statement for a propensity company. Then we have adjustments that we need to reconcile net income to net cash flow from operating activities. So what's the first thing that we do? Well, we add back depreciation, amortization, and depletion. And do we have any? Yes, if we look back on the uh, operating expenses for propensity company, we can see that one of the operating expenses, the first one listed is depreciation expense, which is a non-cash expense. So we add that back to cash flow from operating activities. Now what we have to do is we have to take out the gain on sale of the plant assets. And so uh, we had 
$4,800 in uh, income, uh, gain rather, from on the sale of land. So we have to take out that $4,800. Uh, so that comes out of operating activities because uh, it was part of what went into net income. Then we get into the adjustments in current assets. And uh, these are a little harder to figure out. You kind of have to go back up to inventory and accounts receivable uh, on the assets uh, of the comparative balance sheet. And you can see <coughs> that during, <coughs> during 2018, accounts receivable decreased by $4,500. This is the second line of the comparative balance sheets for propensity company. So as you can see, that change during the period was a negative $4,500. And so uh, we have to, uh, to we, ought, we have to add back uh, <coughs> the uh, accounts receivable decrease. Uh, that was a source uh, of cash uh, from operations uh, because accounts receivable decrease. Now that seems counterintuitive to some of you, but if you think about it, if you've got less of your revenue going into accounts receivable, then you must be receiving more cash. And so this is what we're talking about. We're not talking about profitability now. We're just talking about where did the cash come from that we have at the end of the period. Uh, we also had uh, an increase in prepaid insurance. So we took some of the cash that came in and we invested it in our insurance policy and we actually uh, had a larger balance in prepaid insurance at the end of the uh, year than we had the previous year. That went from 1800 up to 2500 So that $700 increase is a reduction in cash from operations, and that comes out next. And you can see that's a negative uh, on the statement of cash flows uh, for the year ended December 31st, 2018 for a propensity uh, company. Then we also had uh, a uh, incre increase in inventory, and you can see that's $2,500, and that came from the next line down uh, on the uh, comparative balance sheet. The $2,500 increase in inventory is an investment in inventory and a reduction in cash. Uh, and so that comes out uh, as well. Uh, and then accounts payable, when we go down to current liabilities, you can see that accounts payable uh, uh, decreased uh, by $1,800. We paid off uh, more. We didn't owe as much in accounts payable as we had the previous year. And so we had to use cash for that. So that's a, a reduction in cash by $1,800. And then contra to that, you've got uh, an increase in salaries payable at the end of the period of $400. And you add up all of those adjustments, the total adjustments are $9,500, and so you increase the $4,340 by $9,500, and you now have cash flow from operating activities of $13,840. Okay, so that's operating activities. That's one of the three activities uh, that we have to reconcile. Now, cash flow from investing activities is a little simpler. From investing activities, we're told that we had a $4,800 gain uh, on the uh, sale of land. Uh, and you can see that uh, uh, on the income statement, gain on sale of land. Remember, we took that out of operating activities. We took it off the income statement. Now we're going to put it here uh, in investing activities. But we also have a footnote that says our basis in that land was $10,000. And so if we had a gain of 4,800, and if we sold it for cash, which we did, that's what the footnote says, uh, then we have to put 14,800 as a source of cash from the sale of land. Uh, so that's a cash inflow from the sale of land. We're also told that we purchased plant assets for $40,000 cash. So that's the purchase of a long-term asset, a fixed asset, for 40,000 and those two items when they net together are a net cash outflow of 25,200 uh, from our investing activities. 
So that's the second determination that we had to make uh, for our activities during the period. Now the third determination we have to make is what was the cash flow from financing activities. Well, we paid down $10,000 uh, in uh, a, uh, a note payable. So uh, how do we know that we paid $10,000 down in notes payable? Well, we can see uh, on the liabilities and equity side of the back comparative balance sheet, we can see that notes payable uh, were uh, 75,000 at uh, the beginning of the year and 85,000 at the end of the year. Uh, and so uh, does that make sense? It looks like it's an increase in notes payable. I know we issued common stock for 45,000. And we paid dividends of $440. I'm going to have to check this. I'm going to have to check this. This uh, Oh, I see. I see. Never mind. The notes payable increased because of a non-cash transaction. That's the reason that we've got a $10,000 increase. Uh, notes payable should have gone because of the 20,000 seller financing uh, should have gone up to 95,000, but it only went to 85,000. Uh, so that's a very subtle trick that the book is playing on us here. Uh, and uh, uh, because of that, notes payable only went up to 85,000. Uh, and so the, uh, they're actually some of the notes payable that had been issued in exchange for cash uh, had, were paid off. So, uh, you know, we had 20,000, we expected a $20,000 increase in notes payable, uh, but uh, we didn't pay, uh, uh, we didn't receive any. Um, uh, we, we, so uh, we only had a $10,000 increase in notes payable. So we paid off 10,000 of the notes payable, and that's a use of cash. Uh, and so that reduces the 45,000. Uh, and then also we have to take off the dividends of 440. So that's net cash flow from financing activities. That's a net positive of 34,560. Then when we add the operating activities cash flow of 13,840, uh, plus the net cash flow from investing activities of 25,200 and the financing activities uh, net cash flow of 34,560. Uh, then we get a total cash flow during the period of 23,200. And sure enough, that equals the, de the uh, net increase in cash uh, during the period, which is the top line of the comparative balance sheet. And so that proves out and so our cash balance at the beginning of the year, 24,300, the end of the year, 47,500. Uh, and we do have the footnote disclosure about the $20,000 in additional assets, the land that was acquired in exchange for a note payable for that uh, seller financing. Uh, so that's an example uh, of the indirect method statement of cash flows. Uh, and that's a good example. It's a very comprehensive example. And as you can tell, uh, it kind of threw me for a while because of the, uh, the purchase of the land uh, uh, for a note payable, uh, the seller financing, uh, which caused uh, our notes payable uh, to increase, uh, but actually hid the fact that uh, the other notes payable had decreased uh, by ten thousand uh, dollars and so uh, that's a very subtle uh, point 
uh, but an important one uh, as you get uh, further along in your career in accounting. But uh, it's, that's a very good example. It shows pretty much what you're ever likely to run into uh, in the uh, statement of, uh, of cash flows. So I hope that you find that example helpful. Uh, that uh, is really a, a pretty good example of what you're going to find uh, in uh, the uh, final exam as far as uh, the uh, statement of cash flows. Uh, if you need additional assistance in learning this, you can do it again in section uh, 16.4. There is another uh, very similar example that you'll see for virtual company. Uh, you might want to study that uh, as well uh, and find that helpful on the final exam. Uh, so in any event, uh, uh, do your best uh, on this uh, particular exercise. Uh, and this is the last of the four key uh, skills that I want you to learn during the course. Remember that those key skills are to understand the basic uh, techniques of the first five chapters that I call the global comprehensive example. That's in unit uh, 14 right now in the review for your final. Then the bank reconciliation, make sure you know how to do that. Uh, we posted a, a video uh, and also a uh, uh, went back to section 8.6 uh, as far as how to do that. The amortization schedule uh, that is the uh, is one of the lectures that's posted in Unit 14, and that relates back to uh, I believe the uh, uh, long-term liabilities, maybe Chapter 13 or so, uh, and then also uh, the statement of cash flows that we've just gone through. So, good luck with this. Good luck with your final. I'm about to post the final, uh, so uh, uh, watch this video as a review. Go back and watch the other videos that are in Unit 14. Uh, you will have until uh, Wednesday uh, the 11th, I believe, to complete your final exam. And then I have to grade everything on the 12th. Uh, and what I'm going to do uh, is uh, I will make a deal with you uh, that uh, if your grade for the semester is substantially below your grade on the final exam, in other words, if you finish strong, and do a good job on your final exam. Your final grade in the class, if you get an A on the final exam, will be no less than a B plus, uh, even if you uh, have a failing grade for the first 13 units. Uh, we will go back, and if you finish strong on the final exam, uh, we won't mark down uh, the previous work more than two half grades. So uh, uh, do your best, and if you have any questions, feel free uh, to uh, contact me. Uh, that's it for now, and uh, good luck on your final, good luck on your career in accounting, and I hope to see you all again soon sometime. Thanks a lot. Bye-bye.